In this problem, we have a spherical charge right here that is a total charge of Q. And on the outside of it, we have another spherical shell, except this one's a it's a thick spherical shell that's on the outside of it that has no net charge, all right? So it's no net charge. And specifically, if we look at the, uh, uh, the spherical charge right here, that spherical charge has a radius of R. Oops. That one has a radius of R, which we'll denote right here. And then uh, the distance from the center here all the way out to right here is the distance A. So we'll go ahead and just call that A here. And then the distance from the center all the way to the outside here, that's a distance B. So we'll go ahead and call that B. A lot of different radii here, but it'll make it a little easier. And the first part of the problem that we're uh, trying to solve is <clears throat> we're trying to find the... Uh, the surface charge density at all three of those locations. So the surface charge density here, again, this is not hollow. This is a, a solid spherical shell with a total charge of Q. So we're going to try to find the surface charge density here, the surface charge density on the inside of this thick spherical shell, and then also finally the, uh, the surface charge density on the outside of that sick, thick, <laughs> it's a sick spherical shell, a thick spherical shell. And so we'll just go ahead and start with our definition of what we know um, surface charge density is. It's just equal to the, um, uh, the the total charge and the area that it's spread over. So specifically, we're going to start with the, the R equals A, or sorry, the R equals R, big R. So we're going to find the surface charge density right here. And as the problem stated, this one's relatively easy. Uh, it said that the surface, the we're given the radius, we're given the total charge on this, so all we have to do is just put the charge in the radius over here, so the total charge was just a little q, and the area of the on the surface of this sphere right here is just equal to uh, 4 pi r squared, and that is our answer for uh, that specific one. Now moving on to the second part, so r uh, equals a, so we're trying to find the um, trying to find the, the the charge that's being distributed around this this inner cavity right here, this inner spherical shell. So we'll go ahead and, and come back over here and start with our definition of what uh, surface charge is. So surface charge evaluated at R equals A is equal to, you know, again, Q over A. And before we even begin, we know what the uh, uh, we know what the area is going to be, right? So the area of that inner sphere is just going to be equal to 4 pi a squared. However, what's the charge on the inside? That's the, the crux of this part. Is, uh, what is what is the charge that's being distributed over here? And what we learn from the chapter is that whenever you have a, um, a metal right here that has a bunch of free electrons, the electrons will move so that they try to cancel out any sort of, um, any sort of charge that's uh, being placed in there, right? So, uh, if you if there was no uh, spherical charge on the inside of here, the net charge on here wouldn't really it would be zero, right? Because the total charge on this uh, metal sphere is equal to zero. But the moment that you put this total this little spherical charge in here with its uh, charge of uh, uh, positive charge of Q, you have all these positive little charges that are living all around the surface right here, right? And then when you do that, the metal right here, this metal reacts. And it wants to cancel out all those positive charges right here, right? So then you're going to get an accumulation of negative charges that live right here. And I'll just go ahead and write that. So if you put all these positive charges here, you're going to have all these negative charges that are just going to stick to the inside of that uh, hollow cavity right here to do their best to try to cancel everything out. And so there's only going to be enough negative charges so that they cancel out this positive charge. So that means that the total positive charge on here is Q. So that means the total negative charge spread out across the inner portion of this hollow sphere is equal to negative Q right here. So we can just go ahead and put negative Q here. And that will be our answer for uh, the surface charge evaluated on the inner sphere over here. Now, moving down to the external sphere, uh, which is going to be a lead-in on something right here, but I'll just go ahead and write it out explicitly right here. So we have the surface charge evaluated at R equals to B. Again, that's just the charge over the area. We know what the area is going to be. It's going to be 4 pi B squared, right? And then again, the crux of the problem is 4 pi. Uh, what's the charge that's being distrib distributed 
over this uh, spherical surface right here. And if we follow the same logic that we had for this portion right now, where we have all these positive charges right here, so the opposite's going to be true. You're going to have a bunch of negative charges that are going to be attracted to these positive charges, but on the outside, it's going to induce all these positive charges being pushed away from these positive charges here. And the amount of positive charges that are going to be equal uh, on this side are going to be equal to the amount of equal and opposite to the amount of negative charges that are right here, which is going to be the same amount of the positive charges right here. So the total charge that's going to be induced on the outside of the sphere is going to be equal to the amount of charge that's placed within the sphere, and that total charge is just Q, right? So we'll go ahead and place that right here, Q, and that's going to be our answers for these two right here.